Geneva, Switzerland, and from Eboloa, Cameroon, Charlotte. How are you doing? This is our final plenary focused uh, for the first time on the topic at teach to reach outside of the field of immunization, neglected needs of women's health, and specifically female genital schistosomiasis. We're going to have to be sharing experience. How are you feeling about this final session today? I'm feeling really great weather, and I think it's uh, it's uh, the fact that it's back to back with uh, the session, the plenary that just ended on uh, gender barriers in immunization, and uh, this is uh, really um, a, a, a neglected. I call it the most neglected of neglected tropical diseases, female genital schistosomiasis, and. Uh, for those who are involved in immunization, I really want to encourage them to stay back in the room and <laughs> listen to familiarize themselves first and foremost with this disease that affects uh, over 56 million women and girls in sub-Saharan Africa and also get to listen to what uh, scholars that took part in the FGS, the Female Genital Systemiasis Workshop, are doing on the field to fight against uh, this disease. Thank you, Rena. Great. Over. Thank you. And just, uh, we know that, so there are three parallel sessions again. So I'm going to run through these sessions before we really kick off. And uh, so you can stay right where you are listening to this plenary, whether you're on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, or in the uh, Teach to Reach Connect hop-in space, or here with us in our Zoom studio. Um, as Or... Now, the alternative, you have two other options. So you need to make a decision. And some people go back and forth between sessions. You can do that. But I would encourage you to just pick, make a choice and stick with it. There's a networking session to discuss how I am, you are challenging gender barriers in, uh, it's actually in healthcare more generally. Uh, and then we have a session which will take place in the Teach to Reach space. I will show you where that is. You click on sessions and then you go down here uh, to where you see the banner for the movement. And that is where you will join our uh, insights unit to discuss how you can become a contributor, co-author, um, editor uh, for the Immunization Agenda 2030 movement. So those are your options. But if you stay here, then that means you are here. You're going to discuss share experience and learn about female genital schistosomiasis as with our other plenaries we're privileged to have uh, some of the leading global experts on this topic in the room with us and today they are our guides on the side you will be hearing from them and they'll be introducing themselves as we progress as we listen to the experiences being shared but first i must tell you the story of how the Geneva Learning Foundation came to be involved in a topic that we knew nothing about. And in May and June 2021, over 300 healthcare professionals in Sub-Saharan Africa participated in the Fast Package Workshop, a coalition of organizations and experts committed, dedicated to tackling female genital schistosomiasis. And they asked us if we could partner to actually work together, uh, bringing the Geneva Learning Foundation's unique package of interventions to bear on this particular issue. Working together, these global experts produce some remarkably useful resources, such as the frequently asked questions, which we'll be sharing with all Teach to Reach participants after this uh, session. And then working together, these health professionals, hand in hand with the global experts, develop 213 action plans for local solutions to tackle FGS, each in their contexts. And so we asked participants to des describe their key challenge, to set a goal, to identify actions. And we had 213 scholars who developed action plans. Now, for those of you who are immunization scholars, you are familiar with this process. And we hope you'll appreciate what I'm going to say next, is that we brought the Impact Accelerator, developed originally with over 600 immunization professionals. And we said, well, let's see if this approach in which you develop an action plan, but then your challenge to take action if that will work, how that will work for people tackling a different kind of challenge. And the Impact Accelerator is really a human knowledge network, four pillars around making a pledge, but also making a commitment to shared peer accountability, to sharing experience, and ultimately to mobilization to action. So I'm going to ask Charlotte Mbu, my mistress of ceremonies, uh, co-MC for today, to read the Scholar Pledge and this is the FGS scholars. If you're an immunization scholar, you know the immunization pledge. Uh, here is the one for female genital schistosomiasis. 
uh, Reda, it's always a pleasure uh, for me. I am committed to work for a world where everyone everywhere is protected from neglected tropical diseases and especially uh, female genital schistosomiasis. As a scholar, I hereby solemnly pledge to work with others to transform projects led by scholars into action and results that will improve health outcomes. Share my success as well as my challenges by reporting on a regular basis on my progress towards implementation and supporting fellow scholars in doing the same while upholding the highest standard of integrity and behavior. I make this pledge to contribute to the global goals for the health of women, men, girls, and boys in my country and everywhere. Thank you. This is how we started uh, with working with the FAST package, uh, with Bridges to Development, with Bruyère, who are here in the room today as our guides on the side. And we're going to hear an update since that impact accelerator for FGS. What have local practitioners gone ahead and done with what they shared and how have they mobilized over time? So Charlotte, I know there are um, FGS practitioners in the room. And I'm now turning to you uh, to identify our first uh, speaker who will share what they have done since um, joining, participating in the Impact Accelerator, in which they had developed an, a plan for action around tackling uh, FGS. What have they done since? Yes, Reda, I'm inviting uh, Rabiu Ibrahim. Rabiu, if you are able to unmute yourself, over to you. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Yeah, Hello, Rabbi yeah. Ibrahim. So please tell us, is your, the story you want to share, first, before you even you introduce yourself, do you want to share a success story, a lesson learned, yeah, uh, or a challenge? Yeah, good morning, good afternoon. I am Dr. Ibrahim Rabiu, uh, a fellow of West Africa College of Physicians, a lecturer with the uh, committee, committee medicine department, Gombe State University, and a honorary consultant to Federal Teaching Hospital. Uh, yes, I'm uh, one of the LGS scholars that attended the training, the online training by Geneva Foundation on me, and then uh, October 2021. In this way, we were asked to develop action plan. Uh, we have other scholars from Nigeria, and I think um, for us coming together and uh, you know, form a network will actually help us to achieve our action plan. So we, we actually form ourselves into a network, uh, and then we were communicating through our subgroup, and then we were able to invite others in Nigeria to join us, and since then we have been engaging. October, uh, March this year, uh, we transform the network into an NGO and then register with a CAC in Nigeria. And it was launched on the 30th of uh, March 2021. And also we have a website which we unveiled and also we also docu uh, did a, a documentary. We started just 11 of us and as I'm speaking to you now, we have uh, over uh, th over 300 members across Nigeria, and then we have we have CISO in Nigeria. We have branches there, and then we have uh, state branches too. Our intention is to take it to local government branches, but at this level we are this uh, we are at uh, state branches, and we are able to organize training across tertiary institutions across this uh, six uh, geopolitical zone. We did one in a federal medical center at Bekuta. We did one in a state special uh, hospital, Bauchi. We did one in Lokoja, Kogi State. We did one in uh, Delta State and also in Tano. And then we have trained over 200, over 200 health workers about uh, awareness in FGS. As I'm talking to you now, we are carrying out the uh, case searching about FGS in two states. Gombe State and Bauti State. Uh, we are in a collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Health in Nigeria and some other sister agencies. Uh, with the assistance from the uh, uh, BRIT development, we are able to launch the uh, NGO March. And then from the launch, 
we are able to secure two coposcopies. We send one to Federal Medical Center at Bikuta, and also we also send one to Federal Medical Center in Lokoja. And uh, from the launch two, we are able to secure um, a router. This is a form of internet access to help uh, the, the state activities in carrying out uh, awareness about FGS. As I said, we are in contact with some, uh, you know, NGOs within the country and also outside the country. Dr. Garba from WHO was able to assist us with uh, IC material which were distributed across a uh, health facility in Nigeria about uh, FGS. And um, as I said, we are on the track to carry out case searching in two states. Mm -hmm. We are at the stage of uh, corposcopy examination of those that are, are positive to female genital schizomiasis. Our NGO's name is called uh, Female Genital Society of Nigeria. As I said, we have a website which you can access. Probably I'll share it at the, uh, at the chat box. You can access our so, activity. And also, I also have a website, uh, and, you know, uh, uh, an email which you can communicate to us. Thank you, Dr. Rabiu Ibrahim. I do have a question for you. Uh, how okay. did you did you know? Uh, so Julie Jacobson has already kindly shared the link to the FGS Society in Nigeria. Did you know your colleagues before joining the fully digital workshop uh, that took place under the uh, the auspices of the Fast Package? Did you were you did you know them before, or did you actually, meet during the workshop? Yeah, actually, we didn't know each other at the first uh, training meeting. I was able to contact and get the address and their phone numbers through their phone numbers, people like uh, Emmanuel uh, Mosa from Kaduna, Dr. Hamidat uh, from Ogu State, Dr. Adeboshara from uh, you know, East. I was able to take their phone number during the first, uh, during the, during the first uh, training in May 2021, and then I was able to be in contact with them. And then when we came back for the October training, you know, now form a network that later transformed into an NGO. Before uh, the information, I don't know anyone, and then we live in a different state. And they are far apart. I'm in the Northeast, Gombe State. Hamida is in the North, uh, Southwest, Ogun State. And uh, Sonia, also so in the Southwest. I don't know any one of them. Okay. We come together through the training uh, at the at the Wonderful. So this is remarkable that this happened through a fully digital initiative and not a hotel-based conference. We'll come back to that with our guides on the side that, where we'll ask them to respond after having heard several of the stories. I know that Charlotte has several speakers already lined up. Charlotte, over to you. Uh, thank you so much, Reda, and thank you, Rabiu. I'm inviting uh, Mary Ashinyo from Ghana. Uh, Mary, are you able to unmute yourself? Okay, yes, yeah, over to you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon from Ghana. So my name is Mary and I am a public health physician. I work for the Ghana Health Service as Deputy Director of the Institutional Care Division responsible for quality assurance. So I head the quality assurance department of the Ghana Health Service. The department also hosts the National Watch and the IPC program. So I got the opportunity to participate in the online program on female genital schistosomiasis. And following this training, I got a, a call from the National Neglected Tropical Disease Program um, to collaborate to be able to develop some training materials for schistosomiasis control. And we decided to include a component on WASH and uh, IPC. So WASH is water sanitation and hygiene and IPC is infection prevention and control. So what happened was that before this uh, invitation to collaborate, there were so many teaching materials on schistosomiasis, but they did not include any content on WASH and IPC. So what we did was to hold workshops with um, the National Neglected Tropical Disease Control Program, where we developed training materials. And then we conducted training in some selected uh, districts that were on this program or on this intervention funded by World Vision Ghana. 
So after this uh, training, the content of the training actually includes uh, how to improve all the domains of WASH, including water, sanitation, hygiene, waste management, and then infection prevention and control. Why this is important is because if we focus, I realize that if we focus on just clinical treatment of these persons, they can go back to the communities, have contact with very bad water sources, have contact with the vector, and still be able to come up with another infection of female genital schistosomiasis. That means that the preventive component is very, very important. And so through this program, we were able to create awareness about the transmission cycle um, that results in people getting schistosomiasis and how they can also have the appropriate water sanitation and hygiene practices that would help them to prevent schistosomiasis. And I would say this has helped me because I have contributed to the preventive component of female genital schistosomiasis, and we have also built capacity of a group of clinical champions, healthcare workers who would also go into the communities as community health workers to also educate the surrounding communities about how to interact with their water bodies and how to protect themselves against schistosomiasis. Well, uh, what surprised me was that some of these communities that I had visited um, about 20 years ago distributing um, the magic drug are still, you know, having high cases of schistosomiasis, which means that we really need a holistic approach to control of these diseases. And I'm happy that the Ghana Neglected Tropical um, Disease Control Program is making very good strides to achieve this aim. So I would say that this has been my initial contribution, and I look forward to doing more of these. Thank you so very much. Right, Charlotte, we're going to hear, I believe, a third speaker before going to our guides on the side who will then share their reflections, their comments, their feedback uh, on the, 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 the stories that we've heard so far. Yes, Reda, I'm inviting uh, Victoria Gamba, who is already unmuted. Uh, Victoria, over to you, and please start by introducing yourself. Uh, Victoria? This may be a case of microphone unmuted, but with no audio. Um. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> then I would like to turn towards... The oh, there she is, yeah. Victoria. Oh, great. Yes, hi. Sorry, a bit of a network challenge. But um, my name is Victoria Gamba from Kenya. I am an obstetrician and gynecologist, uh, sexual reproductive health rights specialist, uh, gender advocate, and most importantly, I am a trainer on FGS. And, uh, and especially on matters of diagnosis, treatment, and also currently we're working very hard to integrate FGS into the various strategies that we have. So my story is more of um, a successful story, but with a lot of need on more integratory approach to FGS. So why am I saying this? So my FGS story began um, a while back. And uh, one of the things that was a success that we managed to, together with the Ministry of Health and uh, LVCT, we managed to actually get to the remote parts of our country that is in Homer Bay. And uh, we wrote a proposal, we did a formative study that we were able to actually tell the community about FGS, which they were very surprised that it is there. However, on reaching there, um, the two photos that I took that really, really haunt me and tell me, and that's why I'm really so keen to continue with this journey. It was the photo one was just showing, you know, the Lake Victoria in all its glamour and the vastness of it. But then now on the left side, you could see women. It was early in the morning around 7.30 when women were supposed to be in school, the girls, but they were all there with children on their back you know, doing all those domestic chores. And I had all this, you know, written materials on the don'ts that you should not do. And most of them were being violated at that point. So um, it really took me aback and I had to, you know, try and talk to them. And we managed to get some of them to actually come into the, um, the, uh, the, 
the screening that we were offering for cervical cancer because um, we wanted to you know integrate cervical cancer and FGS in the same so they actually came and uh, we got a few that were had FGS and we treated them now um, one of the success that I can say that we ended up having was we had a five-day training on the FGS for the healthcare workers um, who were around 40 and um, we, through that, we, of course, we diagnosed the cases of FGS and gave the treatment. And we managed to also put up a reporting system. And we are clearly working on the referral system as at now. And also, currently, we've also managed to even um, go ahead to other counties. Currently, we're actually doing, we've just finished our advocacy in uh, the coastal region. Um, we intend to train around 70 healthcare practitioners next week, for, uh, the next, uh, starting from the 27th of July. So, but one thing that really sticks out, and that's why I say it's really more of a success story, a partial success story, is that it is very evident and it's clear that we need to integrate FGS in various sectors. And this includes the WASH program, sexual reproductive health, HIV AIDS, education mainly, gender mainstreaming. I had that this is a recurrent theme, especially even in the vaccination uh, training that we've just had. The gender barriers are a lot, and we need to really, really analyze these gender issues so that if we intend to have the impact that we want, we really need to get on accessing the gender barriers and actually empower women to you know, get the treatment and actually the service that they deserve. So that's basically my story. Thank you very much, Victoria. Can I understand what our guide on the side? Yes, indeed. I think we may need a few seconds to breathe and reflect. As our guides on the side uh, just heard uh, several very compelling stories from Dr. Rabiu Ibrahim, um, Dr. Mary Ashinio, and Dr. Victoria Gamba. Um, so we're going to uh, start with Julie Jacobson, our friend and partner from Bridges to Development. Then we'll hear from Joseph Opare and Alison Krentel, also friends and partners. They'll briefly introduce themselves. Please, um, your focus on your response, your comments, your insights uh, in response to the stories uh, you just heard. And I see uh, Julie has just turned uh, turned on her webcam. Let me see if we can bring her up on screen as well. That would be great. Uh, all right, uh, Julie, um, the floor is yours. Wonderful that you were able to uh, to join us uh, for this session. In a way, I know you couldn't have missed it, but still, um, you just heard several remarkably story remarkable stories. Each of them distinct. Each of them different. What's on your mind as someone who's spent decades, if I can say this, say it that way, uh, committed to tackling FGS? Uh, hugely inspiring to see what the what the scholars have done and just the power of personal motivation to solving this problem. You know, for those of you less familiar with FGS, it's a it's a parasitic infection, uh, uh, contact with contaminated water. Uh, just uh, the parasite penetrates the skin, gets into the body, and lives in the in the in the the venous plexus of the pelvis and so affects the bladder and all of the genital tract and it's just not taught about in medical school and uh and people don't even know that they're being infected so i what i love about all of these stories is that they tackle each of the different levels of the problem so with the first one we heard about it's it's a lack of understanding and knowledge and so empowering people with the knowledge that this exists that it happens then in Nigeria, they've created this amazing network of, of people who are taking on this challenge and working across the country, working with the with the program, and it is unbelievable uh, the response to this. And I'm just it's it's super inspiring. The second example from Mary of, of looking at the transmission until we stop the parasite from continuously reinfecting people, they're all, they continue to be at risk. You have to take on that challenge as well. And so that prevention piece and looking up to where does the problem come from? How can we take care of that? And then the third one, if really reaching patients, how do we reach those patients and make sure that they no longer suffer? They're most frequently thought to be sexually transmitted infections. So women have stigma 
stigma because of this. This is a very much a gender based issue where people don't talk about this because it affects women's genital parts, which just don't ever get looked at or talked about <clears throat> openly. And so I'm just inspired by by the by the motivation, um, the the creativity and the uh, a holistic approach demonstrated by the scholars. So thank you so much for your your yourselves being yourselves. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Julie. Let's now go to um, to Alison Crentel um, or uh, Joseph Opari first, I believe, and then Alison from uh, from Briere. Uh, Joseph, uh, what's on your um, yeah, what's on your mind as you listen to these stories? Uh, you're also very com committed and dedicated to tackling neglected tropical diseases, FGS uh, in particular. What's on your mind today? Yeah, so many, uh, and I'm excited to be part of this. Uh, uh, a program. Uh, it appears uh, our system in Ghana, where we got used to female gender assisted analysis. Sorry, Joseph, I, I believe you ago. haven't, you need to introduce yourself first. Tell us who you are, what you do in the Ghana Health Service. Right. I'm Dr. Joseph Kodila Biopare. I am the Deputy Program Manager for yes, the Ghana Neglected Tropical Diseases uh, Program. Right. So, as I was saying, uh, Ghana here to so these activities were not so privy to female gender assistance analysis until some few years ago when um, through WHOSN, that is, that is a standard program on elimination of neglected tropical diseases, uh, supported us with some fun funding to set up um, activities and also work within the, rem uh, the premise of female gender assistance analysis. So ever since a committee has been formed at the national level and membership of the committee, forming the National Female Gender Assistance Analysis National Committee includes public health division, right where we have the Neglected Tropical Diseases Control Program seat. We have members from the Clinical Care Division, Family Health Division, and also Ministry of Education. And our mandate is to push the agenda of the first package which is the FGS accelerated together package uh, into the Ghana Health Service. And this package includes. Joseph, I believe you've moved away from your microphone or you, you've got a finger okay. or a hand. Yeah, that's much better. Please uh, continue. Okay. Okay. So, this uh, first package includes diagnosis, treatment, training of medical personnel, awareness creation, and prevention of new cases within the Ghana Health Services. So ever since we started doing so many activities uh, on that, right? We're also part of the um, virtual training that did occur somewhere last year. And as of now, we have the committee formed. We meet twice in a year. And also we have our activities. We have our program of work for this year. And we've done orientation at the regional levels. And for this year, our focus will be uh, on the training of the district health teams. Whatever activity we do at the national level uh, on the NTDP program, we make sure that we include issues on female gender issues and some As I speak now, next week, we are going to the central part of Ghana, which is Kumasi, one of the biggest cities. There's going to be a training on a trap and some masses, and we have invited to give a presentation on female gender issues and some masses. So it's a crucial issue, and I'm so glad that Dr. Ashinyo is on us on this uh, program and she's at the clinical side, the clinical care division, and together we are working in such a way that uh, we mainstream issues of female gender assistance masses in the Ghana Health Services. Over. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Joseph Opari. Uh, over now to Alison Crentel from Bruyere, a key partner in the uh, FAST package and a great friend and partner to uh, the Geneva Learning Foundation as well. Welcome, uh, Alison. What are your Thanks, thoughts, Rita. having listened to the our three speakers? Great. Thank you so much, Rita. And uh, nice to see some familiar names and faces uh, on the on the call today. Uh, my name is Alison Krentel. Um, I'm at the Brea Research Institute and the University of Ottawa here in Canada. Um, and uh, and uh, part of the FAST package that you've heard a little bit about. Yeah, just a few uh, a few reflections. I would echo um, both Julie uh, and uh, Dr. Opare in just mentioning how inspiring it is to hear all of the, the 
the three stories that we heard about today. And I, I particularly um, was just really intrigued by the integration um, that was mentioned across the three speakers and, and integration of FGS into existing systems. And we really know that this is the, the, the way we're going to make success. We're going to make progress and have success with addressing FGS. And so I just was, uh, I really enjoyed hearing the creative thinking and the personal motivation and just the, the, uh, the places where um, you've been able to leverage existing opportunities, um, add FGS to the agenda. And I, I think that's such, the, those are such important stories to share. Um, and I would just echo the importance of forums like this and, and thank you to uh, the Geneva Learning Foundation for continuing uh, on with us on this um, and, and to see this cross-sharing across different partners, different countries, uh, different kinds of individuals from doctors to government health workers to nurses to all different levels, uh, information officers, and, and just having that multidisciplinary um, uh, approach helps us to, to be more holistic in addressing FGS. Um, and I guess my last comment is just there are there are resources available, and I, I saw that uh, the, the link for the Global Schistosomiasis Alliance is um, uh, posted a link there. The, the FGS uh, Society has been posted in Nigeria and the FAST package. And so I would welcome those of you who are, are new uh, to this area or who are involved in this area also to check out those different um, resources. Uh, uh, and also let us know if there are things that we can add, um, certainly from the FAST package, uh, to highlight other resources that may be available and, and to share with the community. So thanks very much. Thank All you right. very much, Alison Cantel from Bruyère. All right. Back to our mistress of ceremonies. For our next speaker to share experience, what have you done since completing the first phase of the Impact Accelerator for Female Genital Schistosomiasis? And Charlotte, who shall we hear from next? Next guest is already on mute and better it is a Professor Chinelu Ekunife. Uh, I think Professor, you are going to just uh, succinctly uh, say a few of the things because I know you have probably done so much uh, since our last Impact Accelerator. But if you can choose to share maybe your success story with us, uh, 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 we'll be very delighted to hear from you. Keep in mind that there are many other people uh, that need to share their stories as well. Over to you. Uh, are you able to introduce yourself? I see your mic is unmuted. All right. Who? Uh, here we go. Chinielu uh, Ekunife. Yes, well, warm welcome yes. to you. Is your story a success story? Okay. Good okay. Good afternoon, Reda. Good afternoon, Charlotte, and everybody here present. My name is Chinielu Ekunife from Nigeria. I am a teacher in the university, a public health parasitologist, and my research interest area has been uh, urinary meniscus. I've done lots of research in the area, though throughout the time I've been researching, I've never, I've never heard of a FGS. I only hear of urogenital chistosomiasis and so on, until after the FGS workshop and the impact accelerator exposed, which exposed necessary information on FGS. After that, I decided to at least work on my students first. What I did was to meet my head of department to improve the curriculum parasology. So what I did was this course called Advanced Hermetology. I made sure I introduced the topic female genital chistosomiasis. Also, for my postgraduate students, I, under current trends in parasitology, I also introduced that topic, female genital chistosomiasis, and I handled that course personally. Then, as a result, I also developed a sort of manual, which I will use to organize workshops. I think, Charlotte, we just lost our speaker. Yes. Yes, yes <laughs> she just Rena. dropped off. Okay, uh, that's unfortunate. We'll, we'll pick up uh, where, where she left off. Uh, Charlotte, I believe you probably already have a uh, next speaker lined up and almost ready to go. Uh, definitely, Reda. I'd like to invite um, um, uh, uh, Dr. Soneye Isliamat. Uh, 
who will be able to to if uh Sunday, are you able to unmute yourself to share your experience with us? That is almost in the same line with what uh Chinelu was sharing. I'm asking you to unmute. Yes, okay. here we go. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we yes, can hear you now loud and clear. Uh, so, so Neye oh, Islamiyat, a warm welcome to you. Is it a, a success story, a lesson learned, or a challenge that you'd like to share? Okay, mine will be three in one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes. Do introduce it's yourself story. first. At the same time, I've learned a lot of things, and it's opening up room for improvement. We are challenges. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. I'm Shona Islamiat. I'm a public health physician from Nigeria, Ogun State to be precise. I am the state neglected tropical disease coordinator, and I was opportuned to be part of the uh, the training for FGS scholars uh, last year. So after this training, we were we were mandated to to have some action plans that we worked on. And along the line, I just realized that at the level of my program, at the level of my program, we've just been like what we've been doing has been a tip of the highest bag. Because basically the 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 administration of medicines we do target school children. So at the end of the day, we've saw that we've been we have been able to neglect people in the community. Most people in the community could don't understand what schistosomiasis is. Talk less, uh, talk less of female genital schistosomiasis. So immediately after the, the first package and the accelerator training that we had, I, I went back to my team. I sensitized them first on female genital schistosomiasis. I also joined the FGS network under the leadership of Dr. Robbio and other colleagues. So I joined my team members and we made it a point of duty that every, 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 mass administration of medicines that we do in the states and every sensitization activities that we do, talking about entities, we make sure we incorporate um, FGS into, into that activity. So one of such activity was we were called upon to, I, to a particular community in one of our local governments in which about, let's say more than 60% of, of the people in the community are uh, urinating blood and they see it as a normal thing it was it was an accidental finding and so we moved so we rise up to the occasion and we went to that community we sensitized them we talked about wash water sanitation and hygiene to them and you know i just realized that there will be a whole lot of work to be done with respect to sensitizing the populace as i speak to you now i have about two or three other complaints from some other communities and i will want to plead because as it is now i'm going back to my to our national office to intimate them that as a matter of urgency, we need to include FGS case finding into the national protocol, into the national strategy for, for NTDs. Because if we don't do that, there's no way we can we we, we can stop the menace of FGS. So we, we, we are continuing with sensitization activities. At the same time, we are trying to create awareness across board. So I really hope that I will get more people into the NTD, into the FGS society. I'm happy that a lot of people are identifying themselves with us. I hope that we could get more partner support for the society. And I hope that the society can also work more with the NTD national office so that we can lay out a strategic plan on how to, on how to curb the menace of FGS in our communities. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Soneil uh, Islamiyat. All right, Charlotte, uh, let's hear one more speaker and then we'll go to the to uh, our guides on the side. There's also a question from uh, Martina Ezeama um, who says, um, Martina's concern is since this condition is waterborne disease, do the communities have other alternative water supply? Gr drugs alone cannot eliminate the disease. I'm sure that our guides on the side, as well as FGS scholars in the room, uh, are, will, would love to answer that one. But first, let's go. Let's hear one more, uh, one more uh, speaker. 
Yeah, rather I saw uh, Chinelu is back in the room so we could listen to the later part of our story before uh, we will come to turn towards Anthony Bete from Liberia afterwards. So uh, Chinelu, and you promise that your connectivity is much better now. Yes, yes. Yes, as I was saying, right now, and two of my postgraduate students are in the field working on urinary on, on, on FGS. And I'm also in, in the process of organizing a workshop for some lecturers that are interested. Though, as is on strike, so that one is, has been put on hold. But then, for Female Genital Chisosomiasis Society of Nigeria, after the formation, which I, I, I review, gave an insight into, I was made the coordinator of my state, Anambra State Chapter. And we had our very first meeting with five pioneer interested members on 11th of May 2002, where we also had to bring in the state coordinator who sat with us to decide on the way forward. We also talked with the uh, NTD person in the federal uh, character to uh, uh, Dr. Binaber. So right now, we have about four and uh, seven members and other students that are in the field. So I will have our, our plan, our activities to map systematics in the state again. Also, we, 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 we resolve to involve the nurses who are always in the health centers that are familiar with these uh, community people that are suffering from uh, FGS. So we, though we have challenges, which I spoke with Rabiu on somehow fund because bringing those working in the different local government area. It has been an exciting, it has been exciting and uh, most people are now becoming aware of our uh, 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 FGS. Thank you. Over. All right, Charlotte, let's take maybe one more speaker. And thank you, Chinyule Ekunefe. Um, let's take one more speaker before we go back to the guides on the side. I urge you, because there's so many uh, speakers who have yet to speak in the room, please be concise, get to the point, and focus on sharing a specific story, uh, a success story, a lesson learned, or a challenge. We can dispense with general considerations and really get to what's the situation, what happened, why does it matter, what did you actually do? Over to you, Charlotte. Already, I'm inviting Anthony Bette. Anthony, are you able to unmute yourself uh, from yes. Liberia? Okay, yes. over to you. Thank you very much. My name is Anthony Kekula Betty. I work with the Ministry of Health. I'm the National Systosomiasis Coordinator, and uh, I'm an epidemiologist by profession. So, uh, concerning FGS in Liberia, uh, as the Systosomiasis Coordinator, we have been treating uh, school age children and adult in highly endemic area uh, until uh, 2019 when the calling time for neglected tropical diseases come down uh, along with the Ministry of Health and the uh, University of Liberia Pacific Institute for Research and Evaluation developed and a, a proposal to do a research into the endemic districts uh, in Bon Nima and Nima County. So uh, during our research, we developed a training manual for the health worker for the detections and identification of female genital cystosomiasis in Liberia. And we were the first time. And uh, we also trained uh, health worker in the, in the district in 36 health facilities and then also 120 community or worker. So the story is that uh, in one of the clinic, there was a lady who was just being treated for sexually transmitted infections, and then she had almost all the signs and symptoms of FGS, uh, the charges, sometimes bleeding. And as a result of that, she lost her relationship with her husband, and then she uh, she had a first child almost 10 years ago, and then she could not conceive. So after that, she was diagnosed of FDS and treated. She, her condition began to improve, and then she came back to the clinic to inform the health worker that, you know, the, the medicine she took is actually helping her. And then later, she conceived after getting uh, another man. So that's a success story. So, uh, 
that her her condition went away and now she she was she got pregnant and she lived a very happy life but after the research there were a lot of things that we we did we did a dissemination to the community and also the NTD program in Liberia being an integrated program. So FGS were also integrated into the uh, health information system of the Ministry of Health for those two districts. So they report on a monthly basis on the number of FGS cases actually they are getting. So there are also collaborations of the health system strengthening integration with other health programs within the Ministry of Health, more especially the reproductive health or uh, family health uh, division. So, our uh, FVS gear is actually becoming visible. So, we also have some referral system put in place from the Bureau of Health Facility to the hospital. So, we train uh, two doctors from the hospital to also handle those uh, cases that have been referred from the hospital. So, exactly what we are doing in Liberia. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much indeed. We're now going to turn to our guides on the side. Let's go in reverse order. So we'll start with Allison, then uh, Joseph, then uh, Julie. I uh, Because the clock is running and there's still a number of speakers who really want to share their experience, I'm going to ask our guides to be concise as well and to get to the point. Uh, thank you. you. Drawing on their considerable experience and expertise to help uh, this group think about the stories we heard and what they mean. Uh, Allison. We'll start with you. Great. Thanks, Reda. Um, just two quick points. Uh, um, one, um, uh, on the WASH, I've put a couple uh, uh, things in the chat, uh, a link to the WHO WASH uh, NTD guide, which provides uh, some information on um, the integration and importance of WASH uh, when we think about neglected tropical diseases, in particular schistosomiasis, and just recognizing that for so many communities, there are no alternate water sources. Um, and so uh, you know, um, this is a really important point and one that we have to bear in mind um, when we think about FGS prevention. And so that awareness is really important uh, and also uh, uh, continued wash uh, also in terms of um, uh, latrine usage. And the second is just to highlight um, uh, uh, Dr. Bette's point uh, about stigma and just really the importance of the mental health and stigma uh, that is associated with FGS and that we really need to, when we think about a holistic approach, it's so important to um, consider uh, that story that he just brought into mind, and I'm sure many of you on the call have, can relate uh, to the experiences that he shared, but uh, it, it, considering the mental health really needs to be an important part of uh, our uh, approach to FGS. Thank you. Thank you very much, Allison. Over to you, Joseph Opare, uh, from the Ghana Health Service perspective, as you are the uh, Deputy Director of uh, neglected, for Neglected Tropical Diseases. All right. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It appears a lot has been done. Uh, and I just wanted to add that um, Ghana too has received some training uh, manuals, teacher training manuals. And in the development of the manual with the Timmy Genital Systemasis National Committee put in a lot of inputs. And we are so glad that now this book booklet is being shared all over and has been very useful. Fortunately, I'm with one of the committee members, that is uh, Mrs. Uh, Rebecca Bante Wright, and I believe she also has something small she may like to say about female genital systematics and what she's seen so far with committee doing. Becky. Thank you. And now we will go to Julie uh, Jacobson. No, Becky is coming on board to share just a word. I see. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Joseph. Uh, please proceed. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Parry, my boss, for the opportunity. Um, from where I am coming from, I would want to share um, a success story um, as to how I got to know or get to hear of um, female genital schistosomiasis and my um, appointment or nomination to serve on the FGS committee um, what has been done so far and what we intend doing. Um, greetings from Ghana once again. The committee at the national level 
apart from the sensitization at the national level, the regional level, there had been so much, um, I mean, um, comprehensive and holistic approach. We are not only sensitizing or training the health workers, but also our friends in the education sector. So there is this collaboration between the health sector and then um, the those in academia, in where we, we also benefited from a training um, from Dr. Jacobson and her team, Dr. Margaret Japon from University of Allied Health, uh, Allied yeah. Sciences. Um, Apart from the training of the expert committee, at the district level, my background, I happen to be a trainer in cervical cancer screening. So in 2015, I was trained in um, the basic training, that is VIA. I was given the training by Female, Gen uh, Female Cancer Foundation from the Netherlands. And then later on, I trained in how to do colposcopy. And I had been rendering the services ever since. Until 2020, when my region was fortunate to be trained or to be exposed to female genital schistosomiasis, though I went to a, a, a schisto-endemic area, I never had any information about um, female genital schistosomiasis. So during the training, some pictures were presented. It was there that it clicked to me that, wow, we missed so many opportunities during the screening for cervical cancer. You know, the concentration was on the acetylcholine around the um, transformation zone when it comes to um, cervical cancer screening. So we missed these opportunities. And what's even paid me so much was the fact that most of the, those women, after um, hearing the announcement of the screening came with the problems such as STIs, recurrent STIs, or infertility. So now having the knowledge in FGS and then the possible complications, it came clear that we might, we missed on this people probably because their problems might have been FGS and not STIs because they kept on, I mean, the disease conditions kept on recurring and recurring and recurring. So getting the opportunity, I, as a district director, we decided to create much more awareness, train as many people, as many health workers as we can, and screen as many people as we can, and also to advocate for the inclusion of Prazipanta being the magic drug on the um, Ghana National Health Insurance Scheme, and also to develop a, um, a, a main a vibrant data validation at the district level so that whatever, uh, any time we validate our data and we see much of SDIs, then we have to be thinking FGS as well. So, so far, so much has been done. Education department, health department, and TD program is doing marvelously well, and all hands are on deck, and gradually there will be a success story for the whole world. Thank you very much. Over. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, back to you, Joseph, if, uh, or uh, over to Julie. Uh. Uh, thanks. And thanks, Joseph, for making sure that that story got told as well, because I think, you know, what I, what's really inspiring to me is I, I love how Anthony brought in the very personal experience of what an individual has and how, uh, who has FGS and how that ex affected her life, losing her first marriage, uh, being misdiagnosed for repeatedly with sexually transmitted infections, the very personal uh, suffering that comes from this and how important it is to solve it. And then I really like hearing the, the last story, which is about from a practitioner's piece where you've, you've seen these lesions for years, but didn't know what they were. And they, they just were ignored within the system and, and how the awareness of that can totally change and change the lives of the women and girls that are suffering from this and risk. Um, I really appreciate also the um, the, the persistence of uh, Chenyu, I don't know how to say your name, apologies, but uh, of saying, you know, like you lost the line, but getting back on the line, because that's the kind of persistence that it's going to take for us to be able to overcome FGS and getting training into the systems for nurses, doctors, and community health workers, but also doing the training that reaches people who are practitioners now so that they can do something within their practices now, uh, which we, we've heard about also from um, across these different speakers. So I, I really appreciate all of the um, 
all of these pieces and the risk of reinfection. I wanted to just say one more thing about that is that, you know, once you've treated somebody, you know that they're living at risk. And as Allison pointed out, the, the water sources, people, contact with water is within uh, the daily life of people around the world. So, you know, whether it's getting water uh, for the family, washing the clothes, washing the children, washing the car, uh, uh, bathing you know so we the risk of re-exposure is always there so we, once you know that it's within a community we have to be persistent and continue to treat um uh, uh recurringly uh for the risk of that happening again so uh, thank you to all of the such inspiring work and thank you to all of the fgs scholars for for the the time and energy and passion you're putting into this for the women and girls that are suffering from fgs <laughs> Thank you very much indeed to Julie Jacobson, Alison Crantel, and Joseph Apari, our guides on the side for today's session. I'm sharing on screen uh, from the uh, plenary of Teach to Reach uh, um, messages from Fanny Ogu. He says, uh, Charlotte, thanks for rightly capturing FGS as the most neglected female disease. And Joy Chikwendu says, amazing session on FGS. I have learned a lot. Thank you, Joy, for listening and hope you will look at and consider the resources we're going to be sharing out uh, as we go. Wonderful. Thank you all. Thanks to the FGS scholars. Very impressive what you have done, what you are doing, what you continue to do across a number of countries that actually were not included in the FAST package. Um, but that thanks to the power of digital technologies and digital networks, we were able to include working with the FAST package.